Imagine you want to understand style discrepancies in emojis and perhaps generate new emoji designs. You start by crawling 24,000 emoji images from the web and fit several variational autoencoders to the data. You vary the number of latent dimensions as a hyperparameter and end up with a couple latent spaces. How do you evaluate and compare these latent spaces? Latent space cartography allows you to map meaningful dimensions within a latent space. The summary page shows preliminary metrics, including validation loss and the distribution on initial latent axes to help you choose a space to start. You choose dimension 32 as it has low validation loss and no dead axes. Now you see an overview of the latent space. We show a Tisney plot by default as it reviews cluster structures. Each dot represents an emoji image colored by its average pixel color. You can brush a cluster to inspect what is inside. LSC also provides PCA projections, which show salient linear dimensions. You might change to view other top PCs to fully gauge what leads to the largest variation in the data. As you gain initial familiarity with the latent space, you might begin to probe deeper questions. LSC enables you to ex externalize semantic relationships as attribute vectors. To define an attribute vector, you first select examples from two opposing concepts. You can interactively group examples or rely on existing metadata labels. You then specify an attribute vector as pointing from one group to another. Here, you want to examine the style transition between two Android versions. Selecting the attribute vectors enters a new view where all emojis are projected onto the attribute vector axis. The x-axis is the attribute vector direction, and the y-axis shows the largest variation in the remaining dimensions. You might examine how other emojis distribute in the style spectrum. What emojis are considered more similar to Android 9 than 7? The interpolation sequence shows if the transition is smooth and meaningful. The canvas how encloses all examples in each group. They visually indicate the spread of the attribute vector. The pairwise cosine similarity plot shows spread in the original space. You can apply the attribute vectors to any example to see how the relationship holds in different locations of the space. After you define multiple attribute vectors, you may want to compare them. LSC visualizes all attribute vectors in a global view to let you see their relations. You can do this in any available projection. You might also view the cosine similarity between attribute vectors in the original space to further assess their relations. Finally, you may return to the summary page and compare latent space variants based on attribute vector scores. This attribute vector is between men faces and women faces. Applying the attribute vector usually works by growing the hair but it fails for faces without shoulders or full body views. It implies that the latent space does not understand hair length semantically, but instead simply adds dark pixels to specific locations. We reanalyze the latent space on gene expression profiles of cancer patients. Here, we demonstrate the interaction described in the paper. Please refer to the paper for details.
Here we demonstrate how LSC readily replicates insights into gender stereotypes in word embeddings. We define an attribute vector between gender words. We brush the region near the female convex hull to inspect words considered similar to female names. Besides words that are associated with one gender by definition, other words reveal stereotypes in the training corpus. Brushing the male convex hull also produces stereotype words. Next, we turn to the analysis of Google's analogy benchmark. We use words in the analogy test dataset to define attribute vectors in LSC. Here we compare the present participle attribute vector across dimensions. Both the appearance of projected pairs and the pair alignment statistics agree with the analogy test scores. Now we explore the individual words and apply the attribute vector. Applying the attribute vector slow brings the, the expected answer slowing into the neighborhood, but it is not the top choice. Dancing is already the first nearest neighbor of dance. Adding the attribute vector does not change much, but it will be counted as correct by the analogy test. These and other examples suggest nuances that might be overlooked by the automated test.